Hi there. Hi there. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Let me quickly introduce myself and what the process looks like. We've got a mm-hmm. 30 minutes slot, so I spend 25 minutes or so on the interview itself, and then I'll try to give you some feedback right after. I'll document okay. some more detailed feedback later, and then I think I'll share it with you over email or something. Do you have a preference for what type of interview you want to do today, though? Product sense, product execution. Yeah, I would. I would prefer doing execution. Got it. Cool. So then we'll make this about execution, and. All right then let's get started if you face the question i'm giving you right now then just let me know and i'll switch it to something else okay sounds good all right so let's say you're the product manager for the messenger light team what goals would you set for your team let me just start with some clarification i'm obviously familiar with the messenger ecosystem i haven't quite you know used the messenger light can you at a high level state what it primarily accomplishes Yeah so it's a basically it's a light version of the messenger app it's approximately 1 megabyte in size compared to the default messenger app which is 100 megabytes and it's proving to be particularly successful for instance in areas with low internet latency such as india got it that makes sense and and i'm just going to ask a couple more questions just to make sure i i understand the scope mm-hmm. of where the street really fits in right so looking at messenger light i'm guessing the primary intent really is to do a couple of things so one is to capture markets where there's a higher barrier for entry from a data cap perspective or mm-hmm. or you know connectivity perspective so i'm thinking uh, places like tier 3 and tier 4 cities or potentially mm-hmm. you know far flung areas where connectivity is is sort of you know still growing or is a bit of a challenge that that is that a fairly accurate assumption yep yep it is that's fair okay and then i just want to sort of set the boundaries of what the product really does so given it is the light version of the product mm-hmm. are there any you know major bits of functionality that you know might be missing compared to the the traditional messenger version mm-hmm. or is this a lighter version that kind of you know encompasses most of the functionality so it's got bare essentials you can basically chat with someone it only exchanges low resolution images you can only do audio calling got it just make a note of that so so it provides a basic chatting functionality it yep. um provides low resolution images and then audio and then we're still working with the assumption that this is a standalone application as opposed Indeed. to it's something that's baked into the base yep okay perfect and then the last question just to sort of set the stage is i'm assuming that this is a relatively nascent product which is sort of in its growth stage is that is that a fair assumption about one year old so we've got traction it's getting it's got a wide user base So let's assume that it's at the scale stage right now. Got it. That is helpful. Yeah, and the reason I asked that was because um, primarily looking at metrics, it's important mm-hmm. to understand where the product really is in its maturity life cycle. So yeah, um, that is super helpful. So so let me sort of outline the process I'm going to go through, and you know I'm I'm happy to go into specific details in some areas. I might jog through the others, but at a high level, what I want to do is uh, really start with Facebook's um, mission and and correlate the product to it because that will be sort of the guiding factors on how we look at the goals and metrics of the product. I also want to look at a little bit on the um, you know why of the product in the sense that you know what is this product really exists? How does it mm-hmm. coexist with others in the competition? Because from a metrics perspective, I also want to look at you know how likely is a user to go utilize this product while they have several other options potentially. and then you know looking at strategic goals i also want to uh, really think about the user journey and really derive my metrics out of that right and and ultimately through all of that i want to arrive at uh, a north star metric that really gives us a good indication of how well this product is doing does that sound right okay. yep yeah, sure sounds good okay awesome so starting with the facebook mission right so facebook's mission is to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together so i think messenger light from that perspective really correlates well and accomplishes that goal as well where you know as facebook is looking to bring more and more people together this tool specifically helps in you know bringing more people that previously didn't have access or had a higher barrier for entry so i think from that perspective it uh, correlates very well thinking of why the product really exists it really expands on messenger's core goals where messenger was designed as a product that you know makes it easier for people to really communicate and as part of that really leverage their facebook ecosystem and uh, it has a lot of those unique features like 
being able to tie to a phone number and, and connect with people in a very easy manner. Mm-hmm. And in a lot of cases, you would see that Messenger sort of replacing text messaging other traditional forms of communication. So mm-hmm. looking at why someone would consume Messenger Lite, I can think of it as a substitute to the traditional phone and, and, and text apps on their phone, as well as competing products like even the Facebook universe has, you know, WhatsApp and uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's potentially other tools like Viber and WeChat and several others. And really, when we think of metrics, I want to make sure that we're looking at the, you know, acquisition side of things as well as the retention side of things in the sense that what are metrics that need to look good for a user to choose mm-hmm. Messenger in the first place? Messenger Lite, excuse me. Mm-hmm. And then what are metrics that need to look at uh, for a user to really become a repeat user or you know, come back and utilize the product, right? So those are the two lenses that I want to look at it from. And then before I get into the user journey, just sort of want to define the strategic goals of the product. So for any product in this space, I would think of three broad goals. There's there's growth, there's engagement, and there's monetization. For something like Facebook Lite, I would think that I would definitely want to emphasize on growth and engagement. And since you mentioned it is about a year in, it's in the scale stage. I would think of as two primary markers to really guide our metrics assessment, right? So one is where how can we bring more and more users mm-hmm. and how can we you know really spread out the user base? The other is mm-hmm. how can we really keep those users on the platform? How can we engage them? And and I might think about monetization down the line, but in its first year or you know about a year and I would really look at signals to monetize instead of really going deep into how best to monetize, right? Um, so for the context of this interview, let's definitely talk first about growth and engagement. But I would like to take okay. some time to also talk about how you'd potentially monetize this further down the stage, even if it's a year or two away, uh, just to get your thoughts on what your approach there would be. Yeah, that sounds great. So, so that is helpful. So let me sort of take a minute or so. So what I want to do here is think about the user journey. And then I want to identify a specific persona and really what their journey looks like start to finish mm-hmm. in using Messenger Lite. And yep. uh, I really want to derive my metrics from it. So is it okay if I take about a minute or so? Yes, absolutely. Go for it. Thank you. I'm only asking this because we're doing this remotely. But if you could like just think yep. out loud which direction you're going in, it might be helpful for me to see if you're around the right ballpark of what I'm trying to gear towards. Yeah, absolutely. So... I was at the tail end of the process anyway, so mm-hmm. my bad. So I will yeah. think through, think out loud on this. So, so looking at the user journey, I'm thinking of a typical user that might be in the you know, user base for Messenger Lite. So mm-hmm. looking at what they typically do start to finish from that workflow perspective. The very first piece is if I'm somebody in a tier three city where, you know, I want to specifically, I prefer the Messenger Lite over the Messenger uh, app, mm-hmm. I would download the app. I would then launch it, I would log in, and with the login, this is a one-time process where I would link my phone number or Facebook profile. I would then uh, potentially add contacts or and or converse, uh, and converse I'm defining it as messages sent and received, and anything that's at least a two-way communication is considered a conversation, so I want to look at that. I would make audio calls and then I would I would also think about, you know, more of the meaningful interactions aspect of it, where if I'm somebody that sort of DM'd the person and, you know, potentially friended them, I, I want to, you know, potentially look at that part of the journey as well. And the last thing I'm thinking of is more of deactivation, which is, which is, which may be a little tricky to measure, but, you know, looking at users that aren't active beyond a certain extent would be an important thing to consider, right? So that's the user journey. And from this, I want to derive the metrics, right? So there's, there's four categories in which I'm thinking of metrics. One is the acquisition metric or acquisition slash activation, as I would call it. So how many people are re- we really getting to the platform? The second really is uh, engagement and retention. So how many people are really staying and how many are we losing and retaining and so on? Then there's a monetization metric where, like you mentioned, I want to, I'm not overly emphasizing on this. I do want to think about what are signals and what are ways to look at this mm-hmm. in the near long term. And then the last one is really the quality of service metrics where I want to specifically look at how good the experience really is for the user. So these are the four categories I want to work with. Before I jump in to the details here, any questions on this so far? Does all of this make no, sense? This sounds pretty comprehensive. Let's go through these one by one. Okay, so if you don't mind, I'll, I'll try and think out loud as much as possible, but I want to make sure I'm as exhaustive as possible. So sure, I'll take yeah. about 30 seconds and yeah. I'll, I'll make sure I check in with you often. Got it. Thank you. Uh, and just to clarify again, I'm sort of breaking the journey down into mm-hmm. these four buckets where 
anything leading up to the conversation part would be considered on the acquisition and activation side. And then okay. you know, from there on conversations, calling and things like that is what engagement is. So I just want to mark the distinction here. Fair enough. So I did a quick version of it, but let me just go through these and we can further peel the layers and get into the specifics, right? So mm-hmm. to summarize, I'm looking at the acquisition and activation metric to start with, where I'm really looking at how many people are we getting onto the platform. So specifically, I'm looking at the number of downloads, the number of launches, the number of contacts added, the number of profiles linked. This is what I would bucket as anybody that is using the platform and is considered currently active on the platform. And, you know, I don't know that the concept of delinking an account exists, but if it does, then I want to reassociate that as sort of the deactivation metric. So that would be my first bucket. Then specifically looking at engagement metric, I'm looking at the number of conversations and specifically I would like to break that down into the number of messages sent and received because it depicts engagement on both sides of the the table. I'm then looking at the number of audio calls Mm -hmm. and within that, I want to look at the number of calls initiated, number of calls completed, and as well as the call duration. So I think it's important to kind of get how much of volume are we as an example, taking away from traditional phone calls and, you know, that sort Mm -hmm. of thing. So that's important. And then the the number of, you know, friends or friending done, as I would call it, that's Mm -hmm. an important engagement metric where if it's potentially something that uh, builds more connections, that would be important to measure. Mm -hmm. With all of this, I would would also want to look at the trending associated with it, meaning I would want to look at the day over day, week over week, month over month. So it's important to kind of keep track of what that active metric really is. And potentially down the line, I would want to establish a baseline and uh, measure the standard deviation from that baseline. But in addition to that, I also want to look at the ratio of these two buckets of metrics in the sense that if we saw X number of downloads, how many, mm-hmm. uh, what percentage of it really leads to active engagement. And, you know, so really everything in the second bucket as a percentage of the first bucket is important to measure. So that right. gives us a sense of what that correlation really is. The next one is monetization. So with monetization, how I'm thinking about it is Facebook Lite isn't monetized right now, but what are potential avenues where monetization can be done, right? Mm-hmm. Where I'm thinking of two directions. One is through ads, of course. The other is mm-hmm. uh, through something like value-added services like chatbots and things of that nature. So the two mm-hmm. areas where I want to measure you know, sort of room for monetization is one is the in-app time where mm-hmm. measuring how, how long does a user send, spend with between two sessions as well as, or rather within a session, because that would give me a sense of how much of that viewing time do we have and, you know, how much of real estate do we have from a from an ad placement perspective, that's important to measure. The other one is more of the average conversation length where, again, this, this sort of ties directly in, but if, if someone's a power user, then I would potentially want to look at, you know, giving them more value added services, the ability to become more creative within their messaging, even if it's in the light universe, the ability to potentially provide a chatbot, things of that nature. So really from a monetization perspective, at a very high level, I'm thinking of targeting this towards, say, SMBs that want to use WhatsApp Lite, or sorry, Facebook Lite, mm-hmm. Messenger Lite, my bad, and right. uh, really think about, you know, ways in which we can target that particular segment, right? And then and then the last bucket of it really is, is probably one of the more important and nuanced ones for Messenger Lite, because this is really specific to a key problem where quality as well as the barrier for entry was a concern. So from a quality of uh, service perspective, I want to look at the performance and availability, Mm -hmm. which is not atypical from any other app being measured, but I want to look at the number of failures, Mm -hmm. the load time seen with a certain transaction, how long it takes, you know, to connect a call, that sort of thing. And I also want to measure this from the user's perspective where I'm thinking more of a, you know, CSAT or an NPS kind of metric where it applies in two different contexts. One is, like right after a call is done, if the user has the ability to rate an audio call and, and talk about the quality of it, yeah. I would really want to measure that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, ultimately, it's a measure of how happy a user really is. So I would also want to think about, you know, doing this offline in the sense that sending a user a survey, potentially looking at, you know, how happy they are really using the product. And then mm-hmm. one important metric I didn't, I didn't necessarily think about is I want to potentially think about 
sort of graduation from Messenger Lite to, you know, Messenger as a metric as well, because I think this one's pretty existential in the sense that in a lot of cases, it can happen for two reasons. One is where mm-hmm. somebody says, the Messenger Lite experience is too minimal for me. I need to go, you know, move on to uh, the full version to get the full experience. Or the other is where somebody is a power user and for them, the uh, light experience simply doesn't make sense. So it's important to measure sort of conversions from that perspective as well. I don't necessarily see it as a graduation, but it's important to measure that distinction as well. Let me just pause it. I want to talk about the North Star metrics, but mm-hmm. questions on this so far? No, this is this is great so far. So we've got a bunch of metrics right now. North Star, notwithstanding North Star's long term, if you had to set a metric for your team for, say, the next six months, what do you? which of these would you mm-hmm. choose as your focus and why? Yeah, so more like a metric of the quarter or metric yep. for the yep. next couple of quarters. So so I think, uh, do you mind if I take about 30 seconds as you can kind of think through that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Thank you. Okay, so I did the super light version of it and happy to kind of think about this more broadly. But okay. I still want to think about what the longer term metric would be for something like Messenger Lite. The daily active users would be the core metric where I would want to look at, you know, ensuring that there's a decent utilization across the board. There's, there's lots of external factors like maybe Starlink or several other capabilities to which internet connectivity in general can become yeah. better. So there's several factors, but I still want to make sure that we are measuring daily active users. But really in terms of the next six months, let's say, given that the overall product is, is in a somewhat mature stage where it's reasonably gained traction, but it's in the scaling stage, I would really want to focus on the you know activation and engagement side of things where yeah. specifically I would want to look at, you know, so so I'll, I'll think of like four different things and then we can further narrow it down if it makes sense. So uh, I would definitely want to look at the number of activations and deactivations where I, I term this metric as a number of profiles linked is mm-hmm. what would call somebody activated. So I would want to look at the number of uh, occurrences where that is happening because that specifically tells me how many new users we are getting. The deactivation metric really tells me trending and, you know, it allows me to troubleshoot on anything that the user might be um, missing out on or having a poor experience with. So it's important to measure that. It's also important to measure the number of active engagements, as I would call it, which breaks down into the number of conversations as well as the number of audio calls that are done, as well as the last thing is really measuring the in-app time, right? So the so primary metrics would be really around the number of activation and the number of engagements. The secondary metric would be really the in-app time because that gives me a sort of a near long-term perspective on how best to monetize so as the earliest. All right. Can you share a little bit more about why activation and engagement should take a greater priority over some of the other angles you've mentioned? Yeah. So I think looking at the broader pieces that I mentioned, I looked at meaningful interactions in terms of friending. I looked at the yep. conversation length. I looked at the number of downloads and things like that. Uh, I think the activation has a prerequisite to you know, downloads, meaning that is a good indication of how likely is a user to utilize Messenger Lite compared to WhatsApp Lite or Viber or several other options out mm-hmm. there. So that really talks to the competitive side of things as well as yeah. uh, more of the retention and probably the network effects of it as well. So mm-hmm. if I have a network of friends that uh, I might encourage to utilize the Lite, you know, application. So the activation kind of indicates towards all of that. Outside of that, I think I would want to measure how useful people are really finding this, right? So if yep. if we have Facebook Lite installed, but and maybe even being launched, but people aren't mm-hmm. using it for phone calls, then mm-hmm. it probably means that it's not seen as a meaningful alternative or it probably talks to the quality of service. So I think it's important mm-hmm. to measure those interactions, if you will, which really mm-hmm. is around conversations and, and phone calls. And then mm-hmm. the third one's not really user specific, it's really more longer term where you know, ultimately, we want to monetize this product and potentially think about ways to make this, you know, more useful to the broader Facebook, um, you know, ecosystem. So from that perspective, I would measure in app time and and really try to, you know, work quickly towards monetization. That's, that's my high level process. All right. Let's dig a little bit deeper into monetization. Let's assume you've come up with a mechanism already as a PM to monetize the app in multiple ways. And you now need to Mm -hmm. build out a robust set of metrics to track how well you're doing and what the ancillary consequences are. What would some of the metrics be around monetization that you would track beyond, for instance, in-app time, like you mentioned? Yeah. So let me just work with an assumption here, right? So the Mm -hmm. monetization really 
appeals to, I'm thinking of a couple of areas. So one is, I'm assuming that there's a chatbot-like functionality that SMBs are going to utilize, and there's mm-hmm. a fee associated with it. It's a SaaS-based tool. The right. other is more of, we are looking at the real estate that's there within the chat and potentially placing ads and so on. So, so looking at both sides of the metric, or we're looking at both possible solutions, from an ad mm-hmm. placement perspective, I would think of something like within a conversation, if the user goes through, say, five scrolls, then mm-hmm. that's that might be a place to you know look at an ad. So I would really mm-hmm. look at more of the events associated with that transaction where I would want to look at you know how long is the conversation going as well as how lengthy it is and you know what's the number of scrolls the, the user is going through and that sort of thing. So that would mm-hmm. give me a better signaling of how likely is the user uh, to click through and that sort of thing. Look, looking at uh, the other side, and I'm kind of jogging through this given you know the timing That's here. Right. But That's look, right. yeah. yeah, look, looking at the chat bot metric. And this is I'm, I'm just picking what what's kind of jumping out at me as the problem statement why someone would want to use it. Right? Where mm-hmm. an SMB might be interacting with say hundreds of customers they have, and it may be very cumbersome for them to manage it, manage say support volumes and that sort of thing. From that perspective, looking at the number of queries uh, a, a person gets, the number of transactions they don't get to respond to, the number of complaints that somebody might register. So being able to measure context and you know determine context and measure the number of interactions associated with that would be a few things I would look at. Because if, if, if I'm a small business that receives, say, 100 queries a day, and I don't have the scale and ability to respond to it, then I'm probably a really good monetization candidate from a user perspective. So that's sort of the high level direction I'm thinking of from a monetization perspective. Let me just pause that. All right. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. Let's say you have to now inspire your team in say two, two or three sentences with what their goals are going to be for the rest of the year and what, what, you, what they'll be optimizing for. How would you summarize that for them? And, and just to clarify, we're sort of stepping back and looking at Messenger yes, Lite overall. Yes, the overall. Right? Yes, yes, indeed. Messenger Lite overall. Okay. So let me just do this on the fly. So the the Messenger Lite product currently is in its growth to stay, uh, scale stage. It's a year. And so for the next six to 12 months, our focus will be to further expand the footprint of the product as well as keep as many customers on the platform. So from that perspective, the primary things we would be optimizing for would be the number of activations we see from this point on uh, for the next 12 months, as well as the number of meaningful interactions or, or scratch that, not meaningful, but the number of interactions a user would have. And so specifically, we want to look at the amount of conversations and the amount of calling uh, a user would do. So that is what our primary metrics we would want to track with would be. A secondary metric would also be looking at in-app time and conversation lengths because we want to, in the next 12 to 24 months, potentially look at monetizing Messenger Lite as well. So that that, that would be my broad synopsis of uh, how I would look at it. All right, cool. Thank you so much. I think we can wrap up the interview part of it. I'll spend a bit of time on cool. feedback so that there's some stuff you have to take away right away. And then, like, yep. if there's any particular angle which I'm not clear about, I can try to think about it more in deep dive in my written feedback as well. All right? That would be awesome. Yep. So let's start from the top. So first off, overall summary, I thought you did a great job. I've done a lot of these and I've rarely seen as structured an approach as you pulled off. So very well done on that front. Please keep up the good work, both in terms of how you dealt with breaking down that problem, as well as having two to four points for each part of the problem made it really easy for me to follow your thought process and also drill down into where I wanted to uh, like focus on a little bit more. So excellent job there. We started off with right. Messenger Lite. So good job clarifying what the goal was. A lot of interviewers might not contribute what it is and throw it back at you and ask, okay, what, what do you think the goal could have been? But that's not what I wanted to focus on. So I gave you a one-liner and you went with it. Good job tying it to the Facebook mission. This is kind of a prerequisite that Facebook expects every PM candidate to do. And I thought you did it nicely and concisely and didn't waste too much time with it, but said the relevant keywords to ensure that you acknowledge the importance and more to the point, you acknowledge the value of the light perspective there and how it ties into the larger picture. We went into what what I thought you did particularly well here that a lot of people miss out the nuance in is the competitive landscape and the fact that there is a market Mm -hmm. dynamic to this. 
this. So it's not just about comp- uh, like connecting people. It's also about gaining market share in a very, very competitive environment, both internally and externally. So good job yep. on that front. Yep. I did think this we'll come to this later, but potentially in the metrics part, given that you've already done a good job of flagging this out, I would actually build a set of metrics around this as well. You had some really great metrics and I'll dig into this feedback a little bit later. But you had some really mm-hmm. great metrics from the user front, from the user experience perspective and how that ties into Facebook's ecosystem in terms of activations and retentions. But it's perfectly valid to say, hey, I'm also going to look at the business side of the metrics and tie in things like monetization in there and then add a market penetration or market uh, comparative landscape mm-hmm. dynamic as well because that then lets you show off the fact that you're very, very con- cognizant of the business impact of a tool like this. Or for instance, the business impact of having a loss leader which will translate into for instance, upgrades to Messenger Pro or upgrades to Facebook Lite or upgrades to Facebook Full, for instance, as uh, as a potential use case for this product, even if that's not the current focus right now. All right. But that, right. that's that's a nice, Rahul. That's like what will push you for potentially from good to great. I, I thought what you did was quite adequate, to be honest. Yeah. You you did flag out one thing in that when breaking things down, you talked about the mission. You talked you mentioned you look a little bit at the why, where does it exist, and what the value add is. I thought you did a bit of a one liner here, which is okay given that we had just thirty minutes. If mm-hmm. you flag it out, I I would recommend fleshing this out a little bit better. You said it in one line, mm-hmm. like upsell to the rest of the Facebook ecosystem, but that's like that's exactly where I think you can show off your awareness of what the value of this particular app is because it's likely not going to make too much money. It's going to be a drain on resources because it's copying and minimizing functionality that other people can't easily use. Probably you'll be storing less data because it's a light app. People's phones don't have the capacity. That's why they use the light app. So there's plenty of cons to having to building a light app, which is why it's all the more important to, for instance, justify why it should even exist. All right. Yeah. Regarding the metrics themselves, very good job breaking them down into the goals like growth, engagement, monetization was excellent structure. I kind of like flagged out. I want to focus on monetization just because some interviewers do it. Most don't, to be clear. Most will let you take the lead in the direction you want to, especially when they've already hinted at the fact that it's growth or scale. So generally speaking, that would lead into more of an activation and growth focus, activation and engagement focus, like you rightly picked up on. I did the monetization thing deliberately to throw you for a loop to see, like, okay, are you able to pivot to that direction further down in the interview if I want you to? So I thought you handled that well. Next step was the user journey. So no constructive feedback there. I thought you did a good job breaking that down and mapping that back to goals. I particularly liked your four step breakdown of acquisition engagement. I think here it's, there's an opportunity to throw a lot of metrics out there. You can ask your interviewer like, Hey, do you want me to throw out every possible metric or do you want me to just talk about the one I'm focusing on? Because you can, Mm. you didn't get lost. That was good, but it's really easy to get lost in the bunch of metrics here. And sometimes your interviewer might just want like, hey, one metric for each of these domains or the metric for each of these domains. It's an opportunity to just like make the interview concise and focused on what you're looking for. Makes sense. That's that's good stuff. I particularly like the quality of service metric here because that's again an angle that's relevant for light. So it tied back again and demonstrated that you had the business intelligence to realize what the value was. I also like the like graduation from messenger light to messenger. I would recommend even taking it to the next step and saying, hey, messenger. So uh, again, this relies a little bit on your awareness of the ecosystem. But Messenger is actually integrated within Facebook's app as well and also exists as a standalone app. Now, Facebook's goal is always going to be for you to use more and more of its services because they think it can be a value add, but they've broken it out into separate components as well because sometimes people want the light experience or want just that. So rather than just talking about Messenger Lite to Messenger, talk about the entire ecosystem like uh, Messenger Lite to Messenger to Facebook Lite to Facebook. There's also an opportunity here to go a little bit and demonstrate your understanding of the market and share that, hey, we know that people are scared of using up 100 megabytes on an, on a phone which has just one GB. So to start them off, yeah. we're going to give them a one MB app so to enjoy the benefits. And then that allows us to upsell it. But then that upsell is something we definitely want to track. 
generally speaking yeah. when it comes to metrics like this if you feel you're getting overwhelmed with metrics then there is a relatively straightforward framework that amplitude had come up with which works really well in interviews like this uh, you can narrow down the entire field of metrics by breaking them down into depth breadth frequency and value and depth is like anything related to number of how many people are using it this could be activations launches logins whatever depth is to what extent they use it so like conversations per head or like number of messages sent or received per person uh, there's the frequency which is like how often do they keep coming back so like do they come back once a month once a day once a week and so on and then there's the value part of it which is like your subjective qualitative metrics like csat scores and so on like what what their experience yeah. is, how much value they are deriving from it this this framework can viably be superimposed over what you use it shouldn't be necessarily be a replacement but it's just something to keep at the back of your head to make sure you've covered yeah. the entire landscape all right yeah that's, that's just constructive lastly we yeah so there was one piece of feedback i had around prioritization so do you good you mm-hmm. did a good job in explaining why activation and engagement were good in an absolute sense but then i had to ask you to distinguish between those relative to others so whenever you prioritize mm. you can either do it objectively by just talking about hey xyz is good and therefore i want to do that i'd say the more robust way to do it is to also add the relevant ang- uh, the relative angle which is to say xyz is good and it is better than abc because what you mentioned it's a prerequisite to downloads or it's going to be a prerequisite to the entire to the rest of the funnel which is why activations are going to be my focus so adding right. that relative dynamic up front again shows you shows that you are comparing those things against each other and not just looking at one in a vacuum and going with your gut feel that is more important right now and in that context yeah. it's perfectly okay to be very blunt and say look monetization is something i'm not going to focus on in my first one or two years at all simply because that isn't going to be correlated with long term success long term. initially i just want to get more and more and more users my next focus is going to be to make sure that the users i am getting i am retaining which is why engagement is going to be my secondary focus and then monetization comes like a final third because it ultimately i do need to tie it back to business impact and those kinds of trade offs is what facebook is going to expect you to do in your job anyway so making them blunt in an interview demonstrates that you're comfortable making those trade offs at one piece at one point in the interview when i narrow down and what is the one metric you going to choose you still came up with like six or seven that you would concentrate on a lot of interviewers will tell will ask you to will challenge you to say okay but what's the one going to be like if you could just pick one out mm-hmm. of all of these what will that be so be prepared to make that trade off right right makes sense yeah and and i think that's where i was i was sort of doing the quick version of it but uh, yeah. normally i would take a bit more time to kind of think through what that uh, funnel really looks like but but yeah i mean okay. i think yeah. that feedback makes a lot of sense finally we talked about monetization this was a little bit my bad i didn't leave as much time on it for it as i had wanted to but like so here are the oh, i thought what you did you did good for the time you had so well done there just to give you an idea of where i would have potentially taken this interview had i had more time is to challenge you on which monetization strategy you would go with and focus less on mm. the product part of it and more on what are the different metrics you're going to build around that strategy so for instance mm-hmm. if it's going to be clicks is it going to be clicks or click throughs is it going to be cpm versus cpc is it going to be how you, how you're going to charge stuff how you're going to ensure that there isn't an ancillary effect on engagement as a consequence of that so the entire monetization ecosystem is super loaded which is why for instance messenger is still barely monetized because like facebook still yeah. tried to compromising engagement there and then that's the very interesting right. dynamic for an interview candidate to explore potentially and show like yeah. cognizance of so that's that's a potential thing potential way this interview could have evolved and the other direction it could have evolved in is to talk a little more about what the size of the uh, monetization opportunity is and you would identify two opportunities i would have stuck to those and asked you to potentially estimate say hey how much could facebook earn in a single day if it was going with the chatbot chatbot route and what do you think it would lose in the process so what are some of the negatives to having that kind got of got it yeah. okay got it just a quick question on the monetization sir i think so mm-hmm. it, it is actually not something that i have uh, spent a ton of time practicing mm-hmm. so for instance if you were to look at and monetizing click throughs versus views and you know uh, cpms and uh, mm-hmm. cpcs and so on what's the what's the way to prep around it like what are some of the things that i should ideally be 
ready to kind of walk through so i would recommend maybe reading up a little bit on how youtube's monetize its stuff because it's one of the most advanced it has multiple mm. models that it uses be it cost per 1000 views cost per clicks and in, yep. in like in video ads video ads banner ads full page ads so yeah. they've got such a huge gamut of ads right now and they are a very robust ecosystem so just reading up on how youtube does it is usually a very good template for most others to copy there aren't very Got good uh, like the other, other alternative is of course instagram which is like in feed scrolling but that's more relevant to facebook i would say less to chat yeah. there aren't very good uh, chat monetization tools out there but i would definitely recommend reading up on monetization in general simply because it's yeah. becoming a recurring theme in a lot of interviews and it catches people off guard if they don't know what for instance a good price could be like so for instance youtube wants anything between right 5 and 20 bucks for a thousand views whereas like if it's if it's like cnn or new york times they earn up to like 50 to 100 dollars for a thousand views right. whereas if it's a non entity they earn something like 10 cents for a thousand views so knowing what ballpark right. to talk about and what the implications would be on facebook strategy is good the other nuance of course is the risks and data aspect of it and again this has become more important recently because of all the concerns around privacy so this is another trade off yeah, that yeah. you could very viably be asked like what are the risks how are you going to defend against those and are you going to take that risk as a pm in the next one year or in the next three years like how would you mitigate it for instance protecting people's right, privacy yeah. avoiding the uh, creep zone factor that comes up when you make your ads too relevant just being aware of some of these concepts are, is useful those generally tend to come up more in product sense interviews though but it's yeah. worth worth being aware of yeah makes sense last question and then i'll let you go looking at uh, something like guardrail metrics right for mm-hmm. engagement yeah. how would you recommend thinking about it especially for a growth slash scale driven discussion so guardrail metrics you you covered one of them in great depth which i think you were calling deactivations which is a proxy for churn yeah generally speaking things like cs tickets complaints negative reviews or bad reviews all of these are usually the guardrail metrics the core engagement yeah. metrics i would usually just default to that framework i shared earlier which is what what you could that framework of depth breadth frequency and value would you could apply this to any stage of the funnel so for engagement mm-hmm. for instance it would look like at an engagement level the breadth would be like how many users have sent at least one message in the last one week or in the last one day the breadth as uh, the depth would be like how many users spent, sent uh, how sorry what is the num- average number of messages sent per user and averages yeah. can be dangerous so also median for, just so that your sanity checking it's not just biased heavily towards power users i would potentially segment this further into power users and non power users first time users versus users yeah. who are at least one month old and potentially business conversations and friend conversations just so that i get inside right. and make sure none of them are breaking down and these slices and dices are what create the guardrail so to speak because if any of them goes into the red then you know something's possibly going wrong in that ecosystem from the value perspective it's about like time uh, for a message to get sent waiting time connectivity latency uh, same with an audio call lag drop offs yeah uh, like was there and you can get very granular with these so i'd always caution against doing it proactively and asking do you want me to get granular with these because there's a 100 metrics i could build hmm. just around audio and value generally speaking so like was a conversation cut mid off was a data packet being sent when the conversation was cut off there were certain keywords same yeah. uh, there were, were certain keywords present in the call like lag for instance that that's very easy to detect in spite of like end to end privacy uh, and encryption so these things are your guardrail metrics from a value perspective and then of course frequency is just monthly active users daily active users in terms of messages sent so i would basically create that entire yep. ecosystem for one particular subset of engagement and then those would replicate that for each different type of engagement to make sure it's robust yeah did that, yeah, did that, that is super helpful okay yeah absolutely that is that is very comprehensive and and helpful appreciate it Cool. I think we'll wrap up for right now. Best awesome. of luck in your prepar- with your preparations in the meantime. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. No problem. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com.
We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully, and we hope you totally rock your interview.